Morocco, the ultimate land of mystery. Culture and tradition stretching back through the mists of time. A land of ingrained practice and tradition, reaching out to the modern world. A land embraced by the international community. Music and A land living alongside centuries-old practices, still as important to Morocco as they have always been. A land of harsh realities. where there is a public image for visitors, but hiding another, darker side. One hour south of Marrakesh, and sitting at the foothills of the Atlas Mountains, there is a very special project taking place. The Machen Foundation is a place of refuge for abandoned working mules and donkeys. Rescued from surrounding towns and villages, animals work to their last breath and, like broken down machinery, discarded as useless. The Machen Foundation gives these creatures a second chance. The sanctuary was started by Susan Machen, a retired Englishwoman who discovered a desperate need to help these abandoned animals and develop a centre of enlightenment and education for sustained animal care and husbandry. I knew Marrakesh very well. I've known it since I was a very young woman. And it's a place where I was always very happy. Um, it's in a country that's full of wonderment, culture, magical. And when we were reaching the time that we were going to retire, we made a decision that we would look at Morocco as our future home. And we were lucky enough to be able to buy a beautiful piece of land in the foothills of the Atlas, of the High Atlas. And the original plans were that we would build a home for ourselves and some other villas that would be let to tourists. And the truth of what really happened is that there were some puppies on the site when the house was being built. When it was near to completion and we were to move in, I was asked the obvious question that a lot of Europeans are asked by the builder, shall I take the dogs now? And when I asked where the dogs would be taken, they'd be taken to be destroyed. So the dogs had served their purpose as being guard dogs while the villa was built. And of course, on the whole, people didn't want to keep those dogs. Well, I was absolutely appalled and the dogs were born here, it was their home, and I said absolutely no question of that. Charles began to get very worried, because he thought, gosh, what if we have guests and we have all these dogs barking all over the place? My thoughts became really set in stone, that they would not take these dogs away, they had as much right to be here as anybody else, and I then began to think, do I really want to run villas for tourists? And the answer was that I didn't. And during that time, I was visiting Hispano in Marrakesh, which is an English-based charity which treats and cares for mules, donkeys, and horses that are the working animals of the Moroccan people. And during my visits to the Hispano refuge, 
I discovered a little donkey foal called Tommy. He'd been born by caesarean section, and he became quite a character. But because he was spoilt, he became a very difficult adolescent. And the technician at Spanner was tearing his hair out, quite frankly, and asked if we could take him on the land and give him some work to do, because he needed something to occupy his days. So Tommy arrived, and I think the day that Tommy arrived, our whole lives changed from there on in. I made uh, occasional visits to Spanner. I was greatly impressed with the work they did. It was Sue who mentioned to me of Tommy. It wasn't a, ca a case of being apprehensive about Tommy coming. We had the land. It was, to me, a very good idea. Uh, from then on, Tommy was the forerunner of uh, what we now have here. More donkeys came, and they are the most delightful creatures in the world, as anyone who's had any dealings with donkeys will know. We also realised we had to work with local people and work very positively with the donkeys, so that the locals didn't think we were just two silly old people from the UK who were soft about animals. And we very quickly realised that there, were, there was a lot of work to be done with the working animals in Morocco. Working animals in Morocco are no different to every other culture around the world. They used to rely on their beasts of burden before being replaced by mechanical farm implements. Very often, when an animal becomes old or sick, their owners have neither the knowledge or the money to maintain them, so they're discarded as an unnecessary expense. The Machen Foundation does not criticise, but seeks to introduce preventative care and raise awareness of the benefits of owners caring for their animals, increasing productivity and ultimately increasing their working life. A message that seems to be getting through. The initial challenges in terms of the donkeys was to learn everything I could about donkeys and actually get up early in the morning and sweep stables out. We had a challenge just in providing food because here we live in a very arid part of North Africa and we don't have meadows like you have in the United Kingdom for animals to graze. The food has to be bought in and it's very expensive. Finding bedding for them is very expensive. We don't have access to a lot of straw. We had to build stables. We had to learn the hard way, really, about what was the best way to build those stables. We couldn't build wooden housing because it would rot in the sun and the rain in the winter. We had to build brick stables. There were lots of challenges, but we did it because the donkeys were here and other animals, and they had to be cared for each day. And, and I was surrounded by very, very good village people who worked with us and sh sh showed me the way in, 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 in many directions. And we worked together and we gradually overcame those challenges. I suppose the biggest challenge now is how do we grow and how do we raise the, the funds, the income, so that we can continue to take animals, continue to feed them, continue to provide medical care and also provide education and support to working people in Morocco. This little donkey is called Pablo. He's well over 20 years of age and he's worked all the life in the souks down in the market. He was found collapsed, dehydrated and malnourished, overgrown hooves and he was being beaten with sticks by children because they, they really didn't know any better, they didn't know what to do. We managed to get Sp Spana to pick him up straight away. He went to Spana and he had a medical check. They told me he was very old. I said I was prepared to take him and up to Georgia he came where he settled extremely well. He's very happy and he'll live out his retirement with us. This is Sally. Sally's a mule and she was owned by a local man. She worked well but very hard and he became 
worried because she would lost so much weight. And the reality is she's very old and really too old to work now. The man who owned her did try to keep Sally um, and he, he, he let her off the tether but unfortunately she wandered into somebody's garden and they threw a large stone at her which hit her in the eye here and has blinded her. She settled very well, she's very happy and she loves being with the donkeys. And this is Emily. Emily came from the village and she was completely bald, she was covered with mange and the people in the village didn't know what it was and didn't know what to do. After veterinary treatment and regular bathing she grew a beautiful coat, big and strong, such that her former owner didn't recognise when her when he came to see her. So that's Emily's story. And behind me here is scraggy old Jerry, who isn't really so scraggy. He's an orphan, but he's molting. He has the sort of fur that tends to come out in chunks. And very soon you can see the new fur growing, the new hair. He'll have a lovely gleaming summer coat. But Jerry's one of our real babies and we're all very fond of him. Every donkey has a similar story. They're either too old to work and would normally be destroyed because their owners couldn't afford to keep them. They need to have a working animal to supplement the family income. Or they're orphans. And the problem with orphans is that orphans are never taught by their mothers how to work. These donkeys don't. And if they're put to work, and they go to the souk and they're sold to working farmers, the very strong temptation is to beat them very hard to try and make them cooperate. And it's very hard on the donkey. So the challenges we face day to day, you can see the part of the world we live in. And if I was in a donkey sanctuary in the UK now, I'd be surrounded by lush grass and I wouldn't have to worry too much about feeding them. Here we have nothing. For about four weeks in the year, we have the herbs grow when we get the rains and we let the donkeys out to eat them because that's really the only fresh herbage they ever get all year. Every other scrap of food has to be bought in. The reality is that each donkey costs at least £800 a year. Our donkeys, we have to have injected and vaccinated against rabies because people visit and donkeys do carry rabies that's not generally known in the West. They have to be wormed regularly and they are, are well fed and yes it works out between 800 or a thousand pounds a year to keep a donkey. On top of that I really can't do all the work single-handed and I'm getting older every day that's obvious. I do need help we need help in two ways. The men who work directly with me, with the animals, who are very good with the animals, and the other men who keep the land, because we need the land for the donkeys. I want supporters to understand what I'm doing and agree with what I'm doing, and we need money. To, to date, this whole project has been financed by Charles and I out of pensions, and we can't continue. Every day we worry that we might just have to give up. If we have to give up, what happens to the donkeys? They all go to the souks. God knows what would happen to them. We need, we need investment to be able to continue. And it's worthwhile investment because it's not just being about nice to donkeys. It's about understanding and valuing this land and giving something positive to Morocco outside the pure tourist industry. For goodness sake, we could have built a hotel here and made a fortune. We chose not to. We chose to work with the local people and work with the local animals. The Machen Foundation needs your help now to raise the £100,000 it needs to drive the project forward and to establish a sustainable centre of excellence and enlightenment for the future of the next generation of the young people of Morocco. Please give generously now.